So you've done a little research and decided you wanted to get into ham radio. What's next? Before you get on the air, you need to be licensed and know the rules to legally operate. U.S. licenses are good for 10 years before renewal, and anyone can hold one except for a representative of a foreign government. In the U.S., there are three license classes, technician, general, and amateur extra. Technician class is the entry level, license of choice, for most new ham operators. To earn the technician license requires passing one examination, totaling only 35 questions on radio theory, regulation, and operating practices. The license gives access to all amateur frequencies above 30 megahertz, allowing these licensees the ability to communicate locally and most often within North America. It also allows for some limited privileges on the HF bands used for international communications. The general class license grants operating privileges on all amateur radio bands and all operating modes. This license opens the door to worldwide communications. Earning a general class class license requires passing a 35 question exam. General class licensees must also pass the technician written exam as well. The amateur extra license conveys all available U.S. amateur radio operating privileges on all bands and all modes. Earning the license is more difficult. It requires you to pass a 50 question exam and extra class licensees must also pass all previous written examinations. So what's next? I've decided to get a ham radio license and I know I have to take a test. So let's look at the options. My recommendation is to get the book. Both ARRL and the W5YI group put out a great license manual. You can purchase the books either at Amazon.com or their prospective website. And if you're upgrading, you can also purchase manuals for the general or the extra class license. Another option is to take a class rather than just do self-study. So now you've studied the course material or you've taken a class. What's next? Well, next you should take some practice exams. Nowadays, there's lots of websites to do this. One of the most popular sites is aa9pw.com. The nice thing about this website is it gives you the questions in a format very similar to what you will actually see on the test. It also gives you a very good summation of the 10 segments in the test and your percentage in each segment so you know what to study for. QRZ.com also has a very good website for doing practice tests. They're given in a similar format as AA9PW, and once you've completed the test, it'll give you a percentage and suggestions on areas where you might want to do some studying. EHAM.net is another website that gives a very good example of what a test will look like. When you've completed the exam, it gives you a total percentage of right and wrong. HAMExam.org lets you either do flashcards, take a practice exam, or see the whole question pool. This one also, when you complete the exam, will also give you a percentage. And there are other sites as well. Okay, I'm getting pretty proficient now with practice exams. Now it's time to find a place to take an exam. Well, there's a good website for that as well, right at the ARL website. All I have to do is go to the website, punch in my zip code, and voila, there's all the exams for my area. Exam sessions are conducted by volunteers working under the direction of the Federal Communications Commission. There will likely be a charge to take the exam. Contact the exam session administrator to determine the fee that applies to that exam session, which is not that expensive. So what should you bring? One legal photo ID, either a driver's license or a passport. A second form of identification, not necessarily with a photo, such as a birth certificate, social security card, library card, utility bill, bank statement, etc. As long as it shows your current address. Students may bring any of the above items and or a school ID, minor work permit, or a report card card. And don't forget two number two pencils with an eraser or a pen. You can also bring a calculator with all the memories erased and the formulas cleared. If you already have an amateur radio license, you must bring a photocopy, not the original, which will be kept by the examiners, or a copy of the CSCE. You may not have any kind of written notes, as well as a check, money order, or cash to cover the exam fees. Three examiners will check your information when you get there. This is required by the FCC. Now it's on to the test. The test itself is multiple choice. And since you've taken practice exams, you should know exactly what to expect. Once you've completed the test, there will be three volunteer examiners that will check the exam. This may take a little time. Once all three examiners have checked the exam, you'll be informed of your outcome on the exam. When you pass the exam, you'll be given a certificate of a successful completion of examination, commonly referred to as a CSCE. Hold on to the CSCE until you receive your license. If you're already in 
licensed amateur radio operator, you can use your upgrade privileges immediately. However, if you previously don't have a license, you have to wait until a license has been generated by the ULS database, which usually takes just a couple of weeks from the date of examination to generate your license. Your license will actually show up in the mail in about four or five weeks, in most cases. Then you're ready to get on the air and have some fun. I hope this video is helpful, and we'll see you on the air. 73s from N9LVS.